Hello guys, it's Peter and Eddie and in this beautiful video and um, just like the title says this is a special car special. with super special with special skills of course it's even more special because it's in a glorious luxurious car and um, nobody would ever expect such a mind-blowing system in a Citroen C4 let's, let's, do it <laughs> let's say it differently so it's the best sounding Citroen in the world <laughs> that we can talk. Actually not. Let's title it like that. There Actually not, because at Euros, it lost against another Citroen like this. True. Yes, but does competition justify? You know, you know what I mean. It's not, not necessarily the only thing. It's one way of measuring things. Yeah, it's so. you know, competition has a set of rules. It has a disc, but does a car like that make people cry? Well, yours did. Your car made many people cry and people were stepping out of it with tears in their eyes. I don't know what you did in the car with those people. <laughs> Let's not there. So um, we thought to have an update because it's well due. I don't even know when we had a video shared on YouTube of this project, uh, Eddie's daily project, and many things have changed. Not at the back, although we can show it, just to refresh people's mind just so they can see your practical trunk yes with two 18s <laughs> it's a beautiful family car yeah many people can question why you need two 18s although once people hear a car with two 18s then it's difficult to say that one is enough yeah. um, although we also learned that in a large airspace car like this the physics works differently you have to move way more air for certain levels if you want to reach certain levels at low frequencies and we don't need 218s because it's a base car of course we can be silly and we can we can move hell of a lot of air but having the headroom having large cone area with little excursion is always better than having a small cone area with large excursion and yeah 218s are equal to 512s yeah if you say so yeah almost but um it doesn't sound like 512s no. especially in a box it, it, it doesn't sound like any box really uh, because these are in IB through the floor um, some of you may remember the previous videos but we will have a link in the description to the playlist of this then you will see how this one was built and I don't know if you can see it through because the light that we installed inside of the box no you can't see it but that half of this structure is open to the elements outside we just have a layer of rain guards to protect any moisture coming in and the other thing is, when people always worry about dust, crap, water, anything coming in. I looked recently, because I had the MOT and the car was up on the lift and I looked underneath, there's not even rust on the bolts. Yeah, but although in your car the, the boot floor is quite high up. It is. It's it very is. high up. You can see that actually that's the level. Yes. And most of the things are way, way lower underneath. If you wanted, you could even like weld a huge enclosure underneath the car and it wouldn't be in the way. Right, if you yes, wanted to build that's where the spare wheel was. was, but we took it off. Um, but the perfect example for this situation is, is Eddie's because we have a plexi, and if anything was coming in, any dirt, anything, you would see it. And we wiped it off, I think, once before we went to Eurofinals. That was it. That was the last time I wiped it, yes. And we hardly had anything inside, so it yeah, works. The car is being driven. Oh, yeah, it's in daily use every day. So that's about the back. One day we may have really fancy panels as well. One day. It's tidy, but of course, it's not everyone, no, everyone likes to see nice panels and we do that all the time for customers. It's just when we find time for our projects. This is something I really envy because your car is pretty much the only where you have such a dead easy access to, to the gear. And here we have changes because Eddie had freeway front and rear sub. So we had the Zapco AP 150.6 running the front end and a monoblock for the rear subs. Yes. Now we have another monoblock and we changed that one as well. Um, why? Um, oh, why because, change it? because... Oh, because... We, pop. Yeah, we had a slight pop, which we would have got a single point deduction in competition that we wanted to avoid. Because a single point can mean positions at Euros. So we put in the M1X so that many of you see quite often from us good value cheap amplifier yes we spend more money 
on the components but for sub duties this one is perfectly enough and now there's an m1 the smaller brother uh, a smaller monoblock because we are running a front sub in the car that we are going to show and that's probably the highlight of this video more than anything but the rest is the same we still have a helix dsp.3s running the system because we don't have rear fill it's just front freeway and then now front sub and rear sub so we use channel 7 for the front sub and channel 8 for the rear sub as you can see we use mono inputs and we mix left and right signal in the dsp so even if you have one rca you have mixed information going to the monoblocks so it's perfectly fine you know fuses are also very very easy to access so that, that's something I, I really am because i never had the possibility to have such an easy access to anything in any car although i had cars with more practicality than this trunk yes <laughs> uh, but the front end so over there we had a retrim as well on the dash because yeah we use Milano, which didn't last. No, hang on. No, no, not Milano. We had we Alcantara. We had Alcantara. We had a black Alcantara that turned purpley in a couple of months. Sadly, the supplier, I don't know, had a different source or something. And Alcantara should be UV proof, but ours was not. And it was annoying because retrimming this dash means full removal everything had to be removed and that's not a simple task but it was certainly worth it because the finish is now beautiful and we also retrimmed those those wasn't easy. yeah wasn't easy because i had to take them apart and they are actually open it. well i don't think it's easy to open it that easily because i have foam so they don't travel oh yeah eddie eddie treats everything orderly yeah, all foam everywhere pesa tape everything so basically I had to split them, break the plastic wel welds, split them, trim them, and then make sure that... When they go back together, they, they don't buzz and rattle. Exactly. So it's not a practical space that you use. It's not a family car. It's an audio file studio, really. Are you advertising other shops? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Studio. Oh, using using names. Yes, yeah, using audio file, audio using file. studio. Yeah, yeah, there are many many shops in the UK called these names. Um, yeah. What are we called? None of it. PS Sound. Ps -ps Sound. It's funny when people say, "Oh, PSS." Yeah. It's not. It's not PSS audio. It's not PSS sound. It's PS Sound. Anyway, but I think anyway, I think yeah. in the last video we also had the the old tutors. Yes, we had the small babies. So the mid range didn't change. We still have a five inch stacks there that looks tiny in this car because this car is just huge and the dash as you can see is nearly a miles away and he has to reach really really far to get there and that five inch driver certainly doesn't look large so at the beginning we had the Mundorf AMT 40s with that mid and we had great results but we wanted a bit more flexibility on choosing crossovers and the AMT40 is a tiny AMT driver that's not really happy to be cross low so we found a way to mount larger AMTs and this is also an interesting situation where not many people ever see AMTs mounted horizontally which actually turned out to be better for us for competition because these tweeters have a very different uh, dispersion character when they are vertical or horizontal. So this way, this tweeter has only like five degree to the side and then that way. And this way we don't have that much high frequency energy blasted onto this huge glass that other cars don't have, yours does. And we had yeah. issues with reflections. Sometimes we had double images. Um, in certain areas in the frequency range, the image was shifting wasn't as pinpoint and this way we can control it because we don't have so much energy blasting to the side window um, but we have great vertical dispersion this way and it's not sensitive for seating height because up and down it it has way way wider dispersion of course people could say that you know now we have a lot of energy going to the windscreen but to be fair, the same happens with the mid-range so well we use the reflection yeah. for the mid-range more than anything it's a more controlled environment that way um, 
we have long long videos about where to put mid-range on patreon where we discuss this situation and certain scenario scenarios what we prefer for different expectations especially for competition so yes this was a change um, we fitted the mt80s in this car and yeah wherever we fit these we just know what to expect and it's certainly up for our liking and preference they are certainly special because they make people cry i i said it before i don't know what i'm gonna do when i'll have to change the car and i won't be able to fit mundors and i'll have to go back to dome tutors no we don't that's gonna be painful if i have to do it no we just do what we did in in keblers in the amarok yeah you know what i mean yeah 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 but if you really want something you can make it and we can make it you know yeah i i, I wouldn't go back to any dome mid-range especially at this cost at this oh price yeah point. especially when you look at the value of these amts it's yeah. it's difficult to go back because you lose out on a yeah. lot if you like transparent detail the every representation of the top end then yeah yeah the best the best example is when you listen rock music and on most of the dome tutors especially at this prime price point they become a bit harsh they make you feel tired you want to turn it down with those you just turn it up turn mm. it up and you have that's one thing they are very clean the, the opposite um uh, say it you want to turn it up more and more and more oh yeah because they, they, they just yeah. they just do such a great job you can really enjoy turning it up but we have a lot more happening here and actually i may step out and then you have to explain the front stuff first and then it's easier to see it this way <laughs> what you did here we will have to show many pictures people could question you know why we have a front stuff now but did the, did the car need it and it didn't quite need it but there was nothing there in this car nothing dead empty space and then he had a subwoofer that was crying crying for a job yeah, that's the the only reason actually that i i built this front sub not because i mean now that i have it it was definitely needed but the main reason that i started the, this was to uh to use the sub an aliente 12 that i had in the shiroko and he ended up as a front sub firing down you can see a small gap down at the bottom where the sub breathes both sides and that gap is actually quite big it looks small on camera but yeah. you can fit uh, your whole hand in there yeah all the way all along and of course if you build a center console because this is not just a subwoofer this is a full center console you know what you go to the front i go to the back i sit at the back mm. and then you can explain what you've done there because certainly a lot has happened that's it i'll have, I'll have to send the pictures oh definitely all right so let's see what what eddie has done the entertainment system exactly it's just uh, i don't know uh, i had a few attempts to fit a um, tablet a computer no mm. not a tablet. oh the computer yeah a computer because one of our customers gave one to me and i knew from the beginning that fitting a car pc in a car comes with challenges not because you can't fit it but because of the operating system yeah. because windows wasn't designed to be used on touchscreen not as easy as android uh, then if you want android on a computer it doesn't run that well uh, and of course there's many other uh, options out there in terms of operating systems but i did fiddle with all the options and none of that satisfied me yeah it wasn't so, smooth and you had a lot of challenges a lot yeah, of headaches yeah always it setting was, you back it wasn't my first attempt to to do something like that and then fiddling with that computer i discovered something that i find very 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 good very useful um again i didn't know about it probably many people don't know about it but oh i doubt yeah samsung phones they have a desktop uh environment built in so basically when you connect the the phone to a display wired or wirelessly 
you have a desktop interface and basically that's what this is this is just a screen a touch screen oh you have to unplug the phone and show it to people yeah because you built a dock in the center console so i get in the car i have my phone in my pocket i put it in the docking station and everything comes on the screen and i control the phone from that screen and the most important thing which i said it before in that short video that i um, posted on facebook oh in our private patreon yes. club yeah the, the most important thing is the fact that you can control the phone while the screen of the phone is off because many many phones can do screen mirroring but this is not screen mirroring this is just a separate interface if i open an app it's like an this, extension it's like an yeah. extension yeah is this so you don't need to press the phone it's perfect for driving exactly exactly and i can do basically whatever you do on a tablet i can do google maps in split screen i can do see it snaps automatically then this one i have to just turn it make it small put google maps there i have, have tidal google i have tidal. It's amazing i have youtube phone calls are coming on this screen and i can answer messages you have keyboard. but for phone calls you still use the mic in the phone in the phone yes and that's something that it doesn't come through the speakers not because it's not capable of but because the helix dsp doesn't support the um, the protocol for the for the for the phone calls interesting that's that's the only reason yeah so what if, if someone calls you while you're driving and you're using the the screen then you have to i answer from there and the sound is coming from the phone oh, i see it automatically goes on to the speaker of the phone mm -hmm. and the mic picks it up so yeah. okay and but that's the interesting thing i always mention that you know why don't dsp manufacturers have an option that they could have an additional microphone plugged into their dsps and, and then, then you then could you can, yeah yes. you can do everything because you have those natively from the dsp you can control the phone yeah. from those as well yeah just like on the director we can we can control uh track advancing and all sorts of things why wouldn't you be able to answer a phone with two buttons you know red green and yes. then it would play through the system with a mic it would yeah. be amazing they can do so many magical things these days with their dsps why cannot they do this there's not a single dsp on the market that would even try to do it yeah. maybe some of them listen to this video or some of you start to nag them and maybe yeah, it happens in the future especially because on helix director you have now i don't know when they introduced it but it wasn't like this from the beginning you have the um, uh, track information and you have the yeah. next previous track you can pause it from there whatever so you can do many things with that so it's capable of doing yeah. those things it's capable of controlling a device through bluetooth yeah so okay now i'm actually zoomed on to your center console area so what is the volume section there so this whole situation it can run from the phone so you can connect a, a screen to the phone using a usb-c cable which supports video output through that and it's easy right you just have a usb cable goes to the screen but i wanted you know to not mess with the screen while driving yeah so I had this USB, that's exactly how is you can find it on eBay, USB volume knob, right? It's just a little controller, has a volume Take your hand away. <laughs> and a few buttons uh, yeah. where you can control previous track, play, pause, next track, volume, and it also has mute when you press it. And yeah, it controls the volume in the phone. So that's connected to the phone so you have a hub underneath there is a usb hub underneath yeah and from that one i have hdmi for the display this one connected on usb and also the touch screen functionality for for the screen it goes back to the phone so the only real challenge is to find a screen that works with it and power supply for it all the all the screens these days work if it has usb c um Connect, input connectivity or, connectivity yeah so works. you have plugs there on the left hand side let's I'll zoom onto it for the guys so those two plugs that three or three plugs you have there three plugs okay. so that's what i was saying in theory 
you would only need uh, two plugs one to power the display because it's an OLED display and it uses a lot of power mm. uh, and then you would have the second port for video and touchscreen uh, capability right so that would be the cable that goes to your phone and that for the power but in my case because I'm using a USB-C that doesn't support video output through USB-C mm. I had to use a HDMI so basically the USB-C that I have it splits the signal in data and video mm. if it makes sense so that's why I have three plugs HDMI for video that's for touchscreen and that's for power yeah and, and you they just are neatly have to have to hide everything and that's why you 3d printed that the mounting that mounting so yeah. you can hide the cables running inside of it and then of course you fit it to cup holders that you don't want to use for yeah they're not cups. functional <laughs> <laughs> i was laughing with my missus because we went uh, it was still warm outside and we went down to the beach and we wanted to grab some hot drinks and she asked me do you think it's possible to use them i said no not because i can't put my cup in there, i don't trust you <laughs> no i just don't want you know to spill any coffee on and make this. a mess yeah yeah you want to keep it pretty yeah because just imagine you spill something on this you have to retrim it and those those cup holders took me a full day to trim them and not just that but you also had to design it you design everything in 3d and they have a special yes. shape yeah. that was printed and most of the enclosure we didn't talk about the enclosure we mentioned that we will show pictures we will have a lot of pictures at the end of the video for sure but yeah this whole structure was stacked and then it's it's not that easy to show the shape but like on the side there's a really complex situation happening with the shape of the box it has a nice curve um, maybe the build pictures will show it better yeah. but Eddie designed it and stacked it and it was a long process yeah. yes you you mentioned frightening hours because you were doing it in your off time or when we had a gap here and there but yeah. yeah probably now that you've done it once it's still something that would take like yeah easily like 70 80 hours to fully construct with i would say it takes more uh, okay let's say 100 hours it's a lot yeah because yeah. it's not just about building it it's about shaping it it's about figuring out how you can mount it rigidly and hide the mounting points yes how you can get to the sub how you can service it yeah. it's a lot of details that go into it yeah. and now now to be fair it looks more like a, a normal car because before you had nothing there you know, yeah i was lucky with this car no handbrake no gear shifter nothing it was just you just had a plastic little thing like the, where your the phone floor. is now you're on the floor and that was it that you couldn't even reach you used to have the controller down there it was difficult to reach it too yeah now at least it's easier to operate it and yeah now you have 8 inch drivers in true IB you in the kicks you have 12 inch up front 18s at the back everything, Five everything. The dash. yeah we need rear fuel no I don't want that nah I don't want that it would be cool for videos though to give you more ambience oh yeah that's another thing that I thought I'd, I would do with this screen that at competition or show I just take this screen from this holder and I have a whatever on the on pin the, screen on the windscreen sticky mount. Mount. yeah a sticky thingy magnetic and you put the screen there yes it's not gonna be that beautiful like you when you have a tablet because I will have wires hanging here in the middle and going in the center console but it's still you know a good experience it's more you... more realistic when you have it up there in line with your sound stage exactly yeah we've seen crazy people at euros who put a screen on the top of the the hood and then you were watching the content on a large screen um, that but that's that. that's just yeah that's fun yeah. that's only for picture. shows um obviously yeah in the honda i made a custom speedo cover that had magnets so you could lock the screen against it to be fair that could be done in this too but then your speedo cover would need reshaping make and shorter the and thing things in this like car that. is that the windscreen you know you have the whatever this one is called you have it here but my sound stage is still miles further back further back yeah so even if i have the screen sitting here it's still not as natural yeah i would need it literally i don't know but you can't fit it because of the angle of the windscreen. Yeah, it would have to be at the bottom of the windscreen outside yes probably because that's what something 
that freaks people out that the sounds the distance to the stage is is so great it's, it's so far away and many people actually kind of mix the, the meaning of stage depth and distance to the stage in yours yes you have great stage depth too but the distance to the stage is insane yeah, i mean compared correct. to other cars <clears throat> yeah. in most cars stage is kind of like at the steering wheel level or at the beginning of the dashboard if you have speakers in the sail panel or on the pillars but like from your second <laughs> a pillar i don't know what to call it mm. uh, a2 yeah the a1 the, the where the speakers are that's like half a meter further away that many cars don't have yeah. and if you look at it now uh, are the yeah the visors are pushed back you have such a big open space above you that it's actually quite interesting when you drive outside in in daylight you're not used to it to have all that open space above you which which is very spacious it, it gives a really nice trust me it, open it's beautiful but driving but you don't like not, it no. not practical it's not practical at all there you go we it's take the car to switzerland once you will enjoy it there yeah, you have, you have a lot to even see. if I pull both of them, I still have big, big area here mm. and they are still not covering enough. They don't go low enough. Well, actually, yeah, I see it. Yeah, I have to drive like that, but sometimes it's not. It's, not <laughs> it's in your face. Yeah, look, <laughs> yeah. this whole dead space, because you still have to look in there. Yeah, the rear view mirror is another mm -hmm. 30 centimeter further forward. Yeah, yeah they would probably have to there. slide all the way down here and from there too, but then they block everything. Yeah, the, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird one. Yeah. Maybe and you don't know function. Maybe the visors can fold one more time. <laughs> yeah, and the and the worst part of this is that this can rattle, and there's literally nothing I can do about it. Oh come on, who can hear that rattle? Probably nobody. Or you have it to push the system to levels where you. No, it doesn't rattle on music, but when driving, oh, sometimes potholes and whatnot. Potholes. Well, okay, fair enough. That's the point where many people wouldn't even start working on a Citroen for that reason because they are not the most rigid to start with no the amount of time you put into soundproofing um controlling buzzes like where on the edge of the if i can zoom onto it the edge of the door frame over there you can see carpet all along that's mm. that's something you did on all the doors because yes. they were vibrating buzzing while driving and it was certainly annoying yeah but yeah this car turn, turned into something -class. special it's s-class yeah s -class, no. and honestly um we took it to euro finals you were parked next to me yep. and i saw many people stepping out of the car shocked and that's that's the point where we don't care that much about what well, we score what we do in emma yeah that's a disc very technical and you nobody can show me a single person who would demonstrate the emma playlist to your customer if they wanted to impress them exactly. it's it's not that disc it's technical yes some cars may score better but do they deliver emotions do they really create a lifelike experience and give you the shivers and make people cry i had people sitting in the car asking to listen the emma disc and i was like okay no I want problem to listen of course the emma disc okay I, I will demo it to you, but after that, give me five minutes so I can demo the car the way I want and with the songs that... Yeah, you know. equally, if you go to your home hi-fi room, you're not going to play those technical tracks. No. These technical tracks are set as a criteria so the judges can differentiate cars from each other. And to highlight... Who can, who can overcome those problems, yeah, especially... Exactly. Who, you know, getting left, right, center is not that difficult, but getting left, center, right, center equally positioned in most cars and then all the instruments lining up, yeah. um, all those little things. Those are ch challenges in, in the yeah. car environment. Or some cars may not get so high scores for like accuracy on mid bass and sub cause, because maybe they are, yes, a bit more boomy. They have a bit more body. But that's not necessarily a terrible thing when you when you listen to music, especially live music, you have more impact it may be more actually more realistic when it comes to feeling the music and that's something that competition discs can never highlight because what we have in europe the music is never turned up above 85 db actually some of the competitors play the system so low that i don't even understand how they get judged it's so so quiet and 
if I had to demonstrate the system like that to any of my customers, they would, you, you know, they would run out of the workshop. We discussed, we discussed yeah. previously about it. You go to a concert or to, you have a live band in front of you. When they hit a drum, you feel it. When they blow the trumpet, you hear it. They, yeah. A system, a sound system should deliver that. It's should funny, we, we recorded a drum set that we shared on YouTube uh, this summer by Grant at Audio Wave. He had a little practice set in his space and he gave us a little little demonstration and we played it back in the car and it was amazing. It was so realistic. Yes. All those hits when he was hitting hard, it really came through in the system. And I told so many people that that little video, drum solo, whatever you call it, it may be the best drum solo that people can ever play. Yes. Even on YouTube it sounds great. Even the room information, you can pick it from the from the video. Yeah. When he's talking in front of us, you can hear that it's a very dead room. No uh, echo, no, and a small... Are there any reflections from the walls because yeah. the room was treated well? Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's again, um, a reference if you want when he's talking and his voice level is normal, right? Yeah. And then you compare yeah. it to when Plays he music. the... Yeah. Yeah, the, the snare and all that. That's what you should get with a sound system. Not yeah, that video has to be turned dB. up loud. Yeah, not 90 dB. Turn the system to the level that you can hear him clearly, like he would be in front of you, and then listen for those snares and drums and all that. That's the level that you want. Yeah, most systems cannot even play it without yeah. stress and distortion. Yeah. Whereas that's something that uh, I could say I'm proud of. You know, most of the systems we design, they are capable of delivering live dynamic levels and yes some audiophiles may consider us slight bass heads because we when we go to meetings towards the end of our demos we always seem to turn systems up and of course you can hear it from the outside as well but when you sit inside it's a whole different story you don't actually feel how loud it is yeah. it's not disturbing so yeah a lot, a lot changed a lot changed since <coughs> we had the last video a lot changed but the system is the same the system is the same, the owner is the same, yeah. and PS Sound Touch is the same. But yeah, you can see what, what can be done if someone is passionate, if someone puts the extra hours and effort into building something silly, because this is at that level. We don't even count where we are hours into this. Yeah, it's definitely above 400 hours of work easily. Most of the crazy builds we have, they are above 400 hours. That's where the real madness starts. And that's how everyone has to count, because you want something amazing. I don't would do it again, to be honest. Well, yeah. yeah, you do it because you enjoy the process as well, not just the end result. Yeah. Because um, you enjoy the fabrication. Of course, now we have access to challenges. most of the tools that you need. You, yeah. you know, how would you do this front sub and all this madness without a CNC? CNC and the it's tools. It's possible, but would take three times longer. Work, probably. Well, yeah, we just wanted to show this to you guys. A nice little walk around explanation. Hopefully some of you are still with us because this was a lot of information, a lot of chit chat, but hopefully it gives you inspiration or you might be able to do something similar with your screen. Check it out for sure. Or is there a chance we could put up description list of the gear? There's nothing, mm. it's just the screen. And what screen is it? Well, it's AliExpress special. <laughs> okay, yeah. but it's good. They, they advertise it as a Samsung screen display, whatever okay. panel. But it's sold from by a Chinese manufacturer, which I don't have a problem with. Yeah, it works. Yeah, the colors are great. The brightness, brightness, brightness is another thing. It goes up to five hundred and fifty nits, mm. which is very rare. When it comes and you can to really see it even in daylight. Size. Yeah. yeah, it's not great, but it's definitely up there when you compare it to any other tablet. Yeah. This, I'm not sure about the Apple iPads. I don't know, but yeah, they 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 are pretty bright. That's for sure. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna cut this video here because I can't feel my leg sitting at the back. To be very honest. Um, <laughs> but we wanted to have an update with you guys. This is actually our last day this year. We had. A pretty 
eventful year. We had a lot happening. Hopefully we'll have a lot more fun in 2024 and we can meet more and more of you. We have regular meetings in Brighton as well, where Eddie comes at times. Every two, three months we try to organise a meeting in Brighton where all the audio files and sound quality fans come together. So keep your eye on the event section on Facebook. I always share it on Facebook and Instagram. Maybe I should have short little videos of these dates on YouTube as well, because we can reach further out on YouTube. And uh, yeah, check out description and enjoy enjoy the picture uh, montage at the end of this video, where you will see the whole process of this crazy front sub project, and you will see where many many hours ended up. All right, guys. So this is it for this one. We'll see you in the next.